So we're going to talk about retinopathy of prematurity or ROP in this video guys. So retinopathy of prematurity is literally a man-made disease because we are delivering a baby which is due to be born by 36-40 weeks. We're taking out the baby way earlier. So the normal development is disrupted because the in utero environment is way different from the you know the normal atmosphere that you and I live in as adults okay. So that gives rise to this retinopathy of prematurity. So let's first start with learning about the normal retinal vasculature development and subsequently you will understand how this premature delivery of the baby affects the development, normal development. Okay. So the retinal vasculature development actually starts at week 16 of gestation. Okay, it starts as early as 4 months and it goes from the optic disc or the optic nerve head to the retinal periphery. So you should know that starts from the optic nerve and goes towards the ora serrata and it reaches the nasal ora at week 36 of gestation and reaches the temporal ora a little later okay it reaches the temporal ora at week 40. So see whatever is happening normally it's there until the child is born. So suppose the child is born at week 36 the temporal ora will still not be vascularized okay by 40 it will vascularize but we take out the babies way ahead okay so that is why the retina is immature okay the retinal vasculature is immature so now let's see what is the pathophysiology or the pathogenesis etiopathogenesis of rop so this is divided into two phases phase one which is a hyperoxic phase and Phase 2 which is a hypoxic phase, yes. So this phase 1 hyperoxic phase is happening around 31 weeks, birth to 31 weeks. And this phase 2 hypoxic phase happens between 32 to 36 weeks, right? Okay. So what happens in the phase 1? So what's happening is the baby is in a different atmospheric partial pressure of oxygen compared to what is there in utero. And very many times these children are in the NICU where they are giving given supplemental oxygen. So both these are resulting in a state of relative hyperoxia to which the immature vessels respond by vasoconstriction. All right? And there is another element that is occurring here which is suddenly all these important factors like VEGF, insulin growth like growth factor 1 which are all coming from the mother for the baby they are all decreased now. So this results in the next phase or also you know there, uh, this results in arrested vasculature growth. So whatever was supposed to be happening you know is growing towards the ura serrata all that is stopped because the VEGF is not the VEGF is needed no. See it might be a two edged sword but still when you have need angiogenesis for that also you need VEGF. So when that is not there it is not coming from the mother because you have taken it away from the mother no you have already delivered the baby so that results in arrested vasculature okay, growth. 
So, these two elements now are going to result in the next phase which is a relative hypoxic phase because there is vasoconstriction and vessel is not growing. So, what happens to the peripheral retina? So, the peripheral retina is avascular and how is this avascular retina going to respond by producing VEGF and also there is going to be increased levels of this hepatocyte inducing factor alpha which in turn results in more VEGF because it activates VEGF. So, all this is going to result, so primarily VEGF production is going to result in new vessels. So, ROP is characterized by the presence of new vessels. So, these new vessels are going to result in vitreous hemorrhage, in tractional retinal detachment and therefore the blinding complications alright. So, this is the pathogenesis of ROP ok. So, you have two phases which is initially hyperoxic and later the hypoxic phase alright. So, now what are the risk factors for ROP? So, the risk factors of uh, for ROP are primarily gestational age and birth weight ok. Now, why is this very very important because the screening depends on the gestational age. So, the when it is between the child is between 28 to 34 weeks or the birth weight is between 1200 to 2000 grams that is low birth weight babies we are going to screen at 4 weeks after birth yes. Now, if it is an even premature baby that is less than 28 weeks or less than 1200 grams when do we screen at 3 weeks after birth. So, we are there is no point doing the screening immediately after birth because you see we have these two phases that are happening. So, you need time for the VEGF to be produced and the changes to be seen ok. So, how early will it be seen? It will be seen even earlier if the baby is born at a even premature stage. So, that is why we do it at 3 weeks after birth just within 3 weeks because there is a lot of avascular areas, lot of VEGF and at 4 weeks after birth if the gestational age is 28 to 34 weeks or the birth weight is between 1200 to 2000 grams ok. So, these are the primary risk factors. Now, what are the other risk factors? Other risk factors are neonatal sepsis, necrotizing enterocolitis, any history of blood transfusion, then um, history of twin pregnancy, intraventricular hemorrhage. So, you know the history taking is very very important to assess the risk of ROP. Now, what are the clinical features of ROP? So, the clinical features of ROP can be discussed under three headings as we have acute stage, chronic stages and late stage where we have findings of regression ok. So, we have acute stage where we have these certain findings. So, how do we 
how are you going to learn these clinical features so all these clinical features have been described based on different studies so different studies have come up with different names so we learn as to which study came up with what and then i will explain to you okay so primarily we have this icrop international classification for retinopathy of prematurity so we have 1 2 3 latest is 3 which came around in 2021 which gave us a lot of new and some changes in the existing nomenclature okay so icrop basically talks about the different zones so i will be explaining the different uh, zones for you then the different stages that we have then we have the extent of involvement then it gave a term called as plus disease and then there was a term called aggressive posterior rop that is ap rop okay now icrop 3 now icrop 3 is the latest one which came about in 2021 so in that there are a few new findings that they have added so in the zones there is what is called as a posterior zone 2 i will explain all of them okay so there's something new called as posterior zone 2 that they have incorporated along with 1 2 and 3 now in stages when it comes to stages there is a new stage called stage 0 and they've also included a stage 5 c earlier we had only a and b now we have c also okay now extent there is no ch ah, so in the extent there is no change um, plus disease yes they have uh, when i talk about plus disease i'll change you tell you what are the changes and this uh, term called aprop has been redescribed as just aggressive rop that is just arop okay this aprop earlier was also called as you know uh, rush disease it was also called rush disease but now there is no rush disease it's just aggressive rop they, they even dropped out the word posterior there all right so this is about uh, icrop and in the zones they've also included another term which is called notch okay so all these all these terms i will explain to you okay so this is icrop now according to another study so this is according to icrop okay so before i go on to teach you the other ones so we had a study called cryo rop where you know cryotherapy was done for rop nowadays we don't do much of cryo for rop because laser has superseded everything so in cryo rop they described what is called as threshold rop okay so we will learn about threshold also and then there was this um, other study called as early treatment for rop atrop so according to uh, in the atrop study they talked about pre threshold rop so these are all the terms that you need to know now under pre threshold there are two that is type 1 rop which is high risk and we have type 2 which obviously is low risk okay which is obviously low risk all right so the zones of the rop are done with optic disc as the center okay so with optic disc as center so now let's imagine this is our optic disc with the vessels yes so now you take a radius which is twice the disc foveola diameter what is the disc foveola diameter 2 dd so the radius of this circle that is going to form my zone 1 is this okay so the side also that so this is my zone one which is the central zone or my most posterior zone so if i have any rop lesion okay so we'll be discussing the stage subsequently so if you see any stage or you see a prominent plus disease there in zone one it means you treat it's like the parliament area you know the vvip area i should not see any crow also not one cover or one uh, fly sitting there anything there i'm going to treat okay so it's very 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 important so that is zone one now what is zone two so you have the nasal ora serrata and the temporal ora serrata which is a little which has a little more area okay so now take this width and draw a ring 
So zone 1 is a circular area, zone 2 is a ring area, do you see that? So this is my zone 2. So zone 2 is like Rajpath, you know the area around the parliament and the Rashtrapati Bhavan, it's like that. We people can you know go walking, jogging at the normal days but other days or you are uh, doing some suspicious activity there, you are doing walking, jogging, it's fine. But if you are doing any suspicious activity there, then you are in trouble, okay. So remember zone 2 like that. Now zone 3 is everywhere around the city. So the peripheral crescent, the temporal crescent that is there, that is zone 3, you get it? So zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. So this is how we draw the zones. So now ICROP 3 has come up with this posterior zone 2. Now what is posterior zone 2? So you take another 2 DD area in zone 2. See near the ora serrata is peripheral. So posterior means close to zone 1. So this another 2 DD area, this is zone 2 but posterior zone 2. So I have a 2 DD area adjacent to the zone 1. So that is posterior zone 2. This is especially important because now the definition of aggressive ROP has changed based on inclusion of posterior zone 2 which you will see later, okay. Now what is this notch? Notch is, now suppose I have a some lesion in, let us say in zone 2. Now forget posterior zone now, I have in zone 2, I have a lot of some lesion. Now this is extending into zone 1, let us say in 1 to 2 clock hours. The clock hours I will talk in extent, okay. So now this is a notch, okay, this is a notch. So this is a notch secondary to zone 1. So this is a secondary involvement of zone 1. So primarily it is zone 2 but yes zone 1 is also involved. So it becomes a zone 1 secondary to notch, yes because there is a notch in the zone 1, is that clear? So that is again a new term notch which was uh, described in ICROP 3 of 2021. So notch again how many clock hours? 1 to 2 clock hours or 360 degrees of involvement, okay. So these are the zones of ROP. So next we will see the stage, uh, the extent of ROP and also then the stages. So you will understand whatever I have told you here, alright. So let me explain extent first. So extent is described in terms of clock hours. So if I, I am just going to draw a fundus for you, okay. So overall like this and let us say this is our optic disc, okay. I am not drawing the zones now. So this is like a circle, right. So you are going to have clock hours. So 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So you have 12 clock hours, 30 degrees each. So extent is described in terms of clock hour involvement, yes. So I can say 1 clock hour involvement, 2, 4, 5 like that, okay, contiguous or cumulative. Contiguous means one after the other. Cumulative is suppose I do not have lesions which are contiguous, one here, one patch here, one patch here. So I count the number of clock hours, I add them up and I come up with a cumulative clock hours, is that clear? So now we go to the stage, so what are the stages? So I told you ICROP 3 has now stage 0 also. So what are the stages of ROP? So stages of ROP now starts with stage 0. So stage 0 is incomplete vascularization, see again here Earlier we used to say immature, now they say no immature, incomplete because see at 36 weeks it is going to reach nasal aura, 40 weeks it is going to reach temporal aura but you have taken out the baby somewhere at 28 weeks so it would not have reached its normal destination, right. So it is incomplete vascularization but I am not seeing any of the typical findings of ROP, I see the vessels going there but it is not you know complete. So in that case we just say incomplete vascularization which is stage 0. Now what is the next one? Stage 1. So stage 1 where we have a demarcation line, okay. What do we have? A demarcation line. 
where do we have this demarcation line? We have this demarcation line between the vascularized and avascular retina. Okay. So, I will show you the images but before that let us finish the stages. All right. So, stage 2. Now, stage 2 is a ridge. So, that is what I tell you a story. So, it is like you know you have a uh, an empty plot adjacent to your house and that um, person has gone to the US. Nobody is you know claiming that that land now there is nobody to come and you know, build a plot or maintain that plot. So, what do we do normally Indians? We encroach right. So, when I encroach what do I do? So, when I am mowing my lawn, I mow into their untended lawn also. So, slowly I am kind of encroaching. So, you will see a demarcation, a flat demarcation between the mowed lawn and an unmowed lawn. So, you will have a demarcation line. And slowly I realize there is no, uh, no updates coming in our, you know, our uh, group, WhatsApp groups, no messages from that uncle who is in the US. So, now I decide, okay, he does not know about my encroachment. So, now what do I do? Now I lay some pebbles, I lay some rocks. Know, to make sure now I establish my area. So, I said that is my area up to the rock. So, now it acquires a height and a width. Earlier it was flat. Now, there is a small ridge. Yes. So, that is stage 2. At this stage, we can have some new vessels, but again, they are not on the in extending beyond the pebbles Okay, or not extending beyond my retina into the vitreous. So, these are called as popcorn vessels. You know, you, if this is the ridge, you will see small, small popcorns in the, when the vessels are there, vessels are reached only here, no? So, this is your avascular area, this is vascular and here you can see some popcorn vessels. Now, next what do I do? Now, I know for sure uncle is just not watching. So, now what do I do? I place some cacti, I put some barbed wire fences over there because now it is mine. So, now I have these jutting out, yes, can you imagine the barbed wire fences or the cacti plants, yes, so like that. So, that means I have extra retinal, extra retinal means projecting into the vitreous, I have neo, neo vessels, extra vascular, extra retinal, neo vascularization, okay. So, this is stage 3, stage 3 means always, always danger sign, alarm. That means we have to, most often we will have to treat, okay. So, this is stage 3. Now, stage 4. Stage 4 is going to be a complication of this new vessel. What is the complication of the new vessel? These vessels, new vessels always have a fibrous element. So, they are going to contract and pull on the retina causing retinal detachment. Sometimes you can also have exudative uh, detachments in um, ROP. So, but now this is a partial retinal detachment, ok. It is not complete partial. So, now we have 4A and 4B. What is 4A? There is extra foveal or in other words no foveal involvement. You know the central part of the retina, it is not involved. This is with foveal involvement. 4B is with foveal involvement, ok. So, that is stage 4. Now, come to the last stage which is stage 5 as you know is going to be total RD, ok. So, total RD and here we have 5A, 5B. So, 5A is when the optic nerve is visible. See, I have a total RD but I can still see the optic nerve clinically. And 5B is optic nerve is invisible. So, basically it corresponds to 5A corresponds to when you see on B scan we say what is called as an uh, funnel, open funnel. So, the retina has detached like this. So, let us say this is the optic disc, entire retina has detached but still it is attached to the optic nerve and you can see the optic nerve. So, it is an open funnel, okay, the ret detached retina and here you can see the optic disc. Now, 5B is a closed funnel, okay, it is a total RD. And because of the closed funnel, you can't see the optic nerve. So, you can you can visualize the entire thing only on B scan, okay. Now, ICROP 3 gives us this 5C, which is anterior segment involvement. So, in anterior segment involvement, what are the ocular findings? So, number 1 is the AC is extremely shallow because there is a huge mass behind the lens that is 
there is a lot of uh, retinal membrane okay so this retro lentil membrane in the vitreous region so just pushing the lens forward shallowing the ac and the iris touches the lens so you have a lot of posterior synecae and there is corneal edema corneal clouding that is happening so these are this 5c is an introduction because of a crop 3 okay so let's take a look at the images so this is stage 1 okay so this is stage 1 see you can see the vessels all the vessels are ending here and this is the vascularized retina and this is the avascular retina with that demarcation line so what is stage 1 demarcation line so do you see the demarcation line that is the demarcation line stage 1. Now what is stage 2? Stage 2 is we have the ridge. So do you see the ridge? So especially when you are seeing on indirect ophthalmoscopy you will see the, with, uh, the ridge as a raised lesion. Okay? So this is the ridge. This you can see very well. You can see the vascular retina and the avascular retina. So here are the areas where you can see these popcorn tufts. You may see them. Okay. Now coming to stage 3, so stage 3 is you have the ridge and on top of that the vessels grow on top of that and they grow into the vitreous and sometimes they can bleed like this, so they can bleed into the retina or they can bleed into the vitreous causing vitreous hemorrhage. So you have an extra retinal neovascular stage 3, what do we have? Extra retinal neovascular proliferation into the vitreous okay stage 4 you have a partial rd now this is partial rd uh, no this is a total rd actually so this is stage 5 and you can see the traction part no yes and it is open funnel and you can see the optic nerve head so this is 5a which is visible all right so these are the various stages of ROP. So, what is the first stage? Demarcation. Stage 0 where it is a incomplete vascularization of the retina. Stage 1, demarcation line which is flat. Okay, I am just moving into the adjacent lawn. Stage 2, I am placing the pebbles so it acquires a height and a width. So, that is your ridge. Then I am placing barbed wire or cacti plants on that. So, that is stage 3, extra retinal fibrovascular proliferation. Stage 4, partial RD without involving fovea that is 4a involving fovea 4b then stage 5 total rd 5a where you can visualize the optic nerve 5b we cannot visualize the optic nerve 5c with anterior segment findings which are anterior chamber shallowing then we have posterior synecae and corneal clouding okay so these are all the stages of retinopathy of prematurity so under a crop we had to discuss the stages so, we have discussed the stages also. So, next we will talk about plus disease. So, plus disease. So, plus disease is basically characterized by venous dilatation and arteriolar and also sometimes venous tortuosity. Okay. So, under ICROP3 only these two qualify, these two itself if you have it qualifies as plus disease okay earlier we also had iris engorgement that is iris neovascularization nvi resulting in poor pupillary dilatation and vitreous haze these were all there in the original ic crop but now they say this much itself will do to call something as plus disease now what is pre plus there is something called pre plus disease now pre plus disease is the same but moderate, moderate venous dilatation and arteriovenous tortuosity. Not that much to qualify as plus disease that is what is pre plus is that clear? So we are done with plus also. Now we need to talk about AROP that is aggressive ROP okay aggressive ROP. Now what is aggressive ROP? So, aggressive ROP is basically found in premature and little larger babies. Okay, 
found it in larger babies, not in these. So typically we say, you know, in birth weight, these very, very low birth weight. No, this is also seen in larger babies. Now, what exactly it is? It is rapidly progressive, okay, very, very rapidly progressive ROP involving zone 1 and posterior zone 2. See earlier it was zone 1 that is why earlier it was called APROP aggressive posterior ROP because that zone 1 is the posterior most region no but now we find these lesions also in the posterior zone 2. So that is why they took off this uh, uh, remove this word called progressive earlier it was APROP now it is only AROP with ICROP3. Okay, so here it does not follow the routine stages, you know, like demarcation, then you have ridge and then extra retinal. No, it's not like that. And also the findings, if you see, they are very, very featureless, flat and subtle new vessels at the border of vascular and avascular retina okay so that is aggressive rop and aggressive rop has to be treated very very urgently okay so this is aggressive rop so all these have we seen so the aggressive rop earlier it was known as rush disease so if at all some old examiners ask you about rush disease this is what it is so we've seen plus and we've actually even seen pre plus also yes now according to cryo rop according to cryo rop we have threshold rop so let's see what is threshold and according to etrop what is pre threshold rop so threshold rop is you have to have all these three what are the all the three so there should be stage 3 disease stage 3 means those extra retinal tufts growing into the vitreous occupying 5 contiguous clock hours not if I have 1 clock hour of stage 3 5 or 8 cumulative if they are not continuous it should be at least 8 cumulative clock hours okay stage 3 disease and the retinal vessels ending in zone 1 or zone 2 okay so they have not this is not completely vascular and plus disease. Yes, you remember that uh, venous dilatation, arteriolar tortuosity, so that finding should be there. So, this qualifies for threshold ROP and threshold ROP has to be immediately treated. Okay, immediately treated. Now, what is this pre-threshold? Now, in pre-threshold, what is important for us is this type 1 that is high risk because we have to treat this within 72 hours of diagnosis. Type 2 ROP is low risk and we can do a weekly 1 to 2 weekly follow up, usually 1 weekly follow up. Okay. So, what qualifies as pre-threshold ROP? That is type 1. So, we have zone 1 any stage any stage could be even a demarcation line but with plus or zone 1 stage 3 no plus no plus disease zone 2 stage 2 or 3 that is you have a ridge or a ridge with the cacti and plus so all these qualify as type 1 where you have to treat immediately or that is within 72 hours of diagnosis but although we say 72 hours of diagnosis we <coughs> do immediately because once you say 72 hours to the patient the patient is lost forever okay so this is pre-threshold or type 1 now what are the treatment options available to us so the gold standard treatment is laser photo coagulation of the peripheral avascular retina. So, whenever I say treat, it is usually this and this is done using diode laser 810 nanometer. This is what we prefer. Okay, So, this is the 
preferred treatment or what we say gold standard treatment for stage 1, 2, 3. So typically stage 3, yes, that is when we mostly treat, okay. So up to stage 3, this is what we do because after stage 3, then it's different. You do a surgical management. Now we have intravitreal anti-VEGFs. So what are the intravitreal anti-VEGFs available to us for ROP that have been tried? One is Bivasi Zumab based on the BEAT ROP study. Then we have Ranibi Zumab that is Lucentis based on the Rainbow study. Then we can also try Aflibercept based on Firefly study. Okay, so these are the various new studies for ROP which has established the role for anti vegf but now the problem with anti vegf is there is reactivation of rop lesions so this is also a new term that has come up in the icro3 because only now we've started using anti vegf and we've seen this reactivation of new lesions so when you have these reactivation the problem is they do not go through the typical stages so it doesn't come as you know stage one two three suddenly you can see stage three also and another problem is par peripheral avascular retina so once you do laser photocoagulation if at all the retinal vasculature is continuing to grow it will grow into the remaining avascular retina you know it will grow but with anti vegfs the problem of par is the peripheral avascular retina is extensive, you know, a lot of peripheral avascular retina. Because of this reactivation and stuff, there is a need for retreatment. So you will have to monitor the patient for around six months, five months. So we have to monitor these babies for around 60 weeks, okay, 50 to 60 weeks because that is till then you can have reactivation, okay. Coming to the newer treatment that is available before I talk about a few more terms. So we have tried propranolol both oral and topical. It has been proved in a couple of studies topical 0.02% to prevent progression of ROP. Then caffeine, caffeine which is usually used in the management of apnea. See premature babies have the risk of apnea and uh, caffeine is used. So caffeine also has been proved to be useful in the prevention of progression. Then uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, this also have been proved to prevent progression of ROP. Okay. Now, you remember we talked about the late changes, we talked about acute changes, acute changes are your stage 1, 2, 3, chronic are your when you develop retinal detachment okay and late change okay so for chronic changes what are the what is a treatment so this is basically we are surgery so we can either do a scleral buckling or vitrectomy so usually it is a lens sparing vitrectomy we don't touch the lens okay so this is for stage 4 a usually that is when you have a little bit of uh, visual prognosis after that the prognosis is really bad so there's no point doing a surgery so what are the late changes so late changes are the regression so regression represents the involution or resolution so resolution means with treatment involution is there is spontaneous so spontaneously it occurs in 85% of the babies, 85% spontaneous regression do occur. And you will see the changes 1 to 2 weeks later. So the signs are seen 1 to 2 weeks later. Now if you are doing laser, the signs are seen same 1 to 2 weeks later. But if you are giving intravitreal anti-VEGFs, then you will see the changes even one to three days later. So what are the changes of regression? So the changes during regression are vascular 
and of the ROP lesions. So, what are the vascular changes? So, first thing you will see is decrease in the vessel dilatation. You remember the plus disease and all? And then you might see decrease in the tortuosity of the vessels. And then there can be changes in the iris vessels resulting in better, better pupillary dilatation. And regression of the vessels around the lens. So, tunica vasculosa lentis. So, what happens your ocular media is clear or clearer and then there is also resolution of the retinal hemorrhages. Okay, so, these are all the vascular changes. So, what happens to ROP lesions? The ROP lesions become thinned out and whitened out of the neovascular membranes. Okay? So, these are all the regression changes. So, that is about ROP. So, guys we are done with ROP. So, ROP is an important topic because screening is extremely extremely important. Again, so, as let me repeat it for you. So, if the gestational age is between 28 to 34 weeks or the birth weight is less than 2000 grams, that is 1200 to 2000 grams, then you will screen the baby 4 weeks after birth. Okay? And if it is less than 28 weeks or if the birth weight is very low birth weight, less than 1200 grams, then you will screen a little earlier at 3 weeks after birth. Okay? So, ROP comes also under your RBSK program of uh, community of that. So, it is extremely, extremely important. And what is the treatment of choice? Treatment of choice, although we do intravitreal, treatment of choice is later photocoagulation of the peripheral avascular retina using diode laser which has a wavelength of 18 nanometer. All the others are adjunct treatment. Is that clear? Okay.